NCT's Ten is going to make his solo debut. On January 4th, a media outlet reported that Ten will be the second NCT member to release his solo album, which is set to happen sometime in February. Even though he has released songs as part of the SM Station project, this is the first time that he's releasing music as a solo artist. SM Entertainment were quick to confirm the news of his debut, but hasn't given an exact date on when it's coming out or any other details, so stay tuned for more updates. Choi Yena, on the other hand, is preparing for her comeback, which will happen very soon. She's going to release her third mini album, Good Morning, on January 15th, and has already shared the track list and given us sneak peeks into the lyrics. The album will have four new tracks, including the title track Good Morning and other tracks Good Girls in the Dark, Damn You, and Ugly Duckling. Based on the lyrics to the title track, the song will probably be an upbeat track that'll manage to cheer everyone up, so make sure to give it a listen when it comes out. It's her first comeback after her controversy with her last release, so both fans and non-fans alike are curious to see what she's going to deliver this time, and we hope to see the good old Yena with positive vibes back. EXO's Baekhyun has finally established his own agency. Back in August, he held a live stream on his Instagram account to address the rumors that he had founded his own company. According to Baekhyun, SM Entertainment had approved this because, after all, he was leaving neither SM nor EXO. Then, he introduced the company he co-founded with his friend Casper, which was established with the aim of supporting the growth of choreographers and dancers. It was called One Signature, but Baekhyun had mentioned that the name would be changing later. However, what we didn't know is that by that point, he had established another company to fully handle his solo activities. He did mention that he would be starting two companies, and that he would reveal the name of the second one in 2024, but we had no idea just how much he had prepared for this. Ten Asia, who made the initial report, obtained all the corporate registration documents and shared that Baekhyun's company is named I and B100. The company was set up on June 23rd last year, which means that it was established before the renewal issue with SM that happened in August. According to Ten Asia, by this point, Baekhyun had finished all the necessary steps to become the CEO and got registered as an internal director. Even though he settled his troubles with SM and ended up renewing his contract for group activities with SM last year, Baekhyun plans to do activities with both SM and his own company at the same time. The exciting part is that EXO members Chen and Xiu Min, who were involved in the lawsuit against SM alongside Baekhyun, might also join his company. It has also been revealed that the company covers a wide range of entertainment-related activities like production, management, and investment advice, giving Baekhyun the freedom to pursue his ideas as a producer. People in the industry are anticipating a clearer plan for the business to come out this year. Responding to the news, SM made sure to confirm that Baekhyun, Chen, and Xiu Min have active contracts with the company. They noted that the individual projects that the three are involved in under Baekhyun's new label are part of a joint workshop concept. What people are curious about is the music that he will release now that he has full control over everything and how different it will be from the music he released under SM. As netizens put it best, we can't help but feel proud of what he's done and want to see if he'll use his connections in the industry to secure the best staff that he can. All in all, we're excited to follow him in his journey and wish him the best of luck. After losing all members of Icon, Blackpink, and Big Bang, YG Entertainment has suffered yet another big loss. On January 3rd, it was reported that Kwon Hyunbin, known from Produce 101 and for being an actor under the agency, has left YG after his contract ended. You might know Hyunbin from Produce 101 and then the project group he debuted in JBJ. He then switched from K-plus to YG Entertainment and then to the related label YGX. After JBJ disbanded in 2018, he focused more on acting and appeared in K-dramas like Cafe Kilimanjaro, The Red Sleeve, and Pandora Beneath the Paradise. As of now, he doesn't seem to be looking for a new agency, but YG, on the other hand, seems to be taking hit after hit lately. If it isn't enough that they're losing their idols, they're losing their actors too now, and it's expected that other big names will follow in these steps. It doesn't seem like Hyunbin will be the last artist they'll lose either, so let's see what happens this year for the company. In other news, Jenny has been making a lot of moves ever since she left YG. The most recent one is her appearance on a music talk show, The Seasons Lee Hyori's Red Carpet, hosted by the legendary Lee Hyori herself. During the talk show, the topic of her newly established agency came up as Yori appeared curious about the reasons why she started her own company instead of renewing her contract with YG. After all, she had been in the agency for so long and people expected her to remain there, Jenny explained that even though she'll continue to do group activities with her former company because she wanted to, she also needed to have more freedom when it came to her solo activities, so she came up with the idea to start her own agency with the people she trusted the most. She went on to say, There is a crew of people that were with me for a long time at my label. I wanted to freely do any activities and promotions. Jenny also explained the name she chose for her label, expressing that it reflects her determination to succeed even if her journey is unconventional. She also expressed that she hoped to receive a lot of support 
support in the future. Jenny even mentioned her former agency, saying that she had learned a lot during the time she was an artist under YG and confirmed that they still had a good relationship. In return, Lee Hyori praised Jenny for being independent from a management company. Yet, she highlighted that leaving the comfort of her former company must have been pretty hard and took a lot of bravery on Jenny's part. What's very important is that during the show, Jenny mentioned her plans to launch a complete solo album in 2024, aiming for a worldwide release. She's determined to come back to music this year with top-notch content, which is what the fans have wanted from her for a long time. It's quite surprising to see her doing many things in these last few weeks at YG compared to her previous schedules with the company. This has just made us more excited to see what she has in store for this year now that she has complete control of her career. When we mentioned that YG has been taking hit after hit these past few months, we really mean it as their bad luck continues. Their newest girl group, Baby Monster, was surrounded by controversy before they even debuted. There was the issue of their ages, the delay in debut, the lackluster song that came out after all that waiting, and most importantly, Ayan's absence. Fans were most excited to see Ayan debut among the members, so when the rumors started that she had left the agency, everyone was confused. The confusion got worse when YG had announced that she wouldn't be debuting with the group briefly before their debut song came out. This has left people with more questions than answers regarding her status as a member, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like those questions will be answered anytime soon. YG Entertainment released a video on the first day of the year where Yang hyun -suk himself shared his plans about Baby Monster's future activities. He shared that the group would be dropping their new song, Stuck in the Middle, on February 1st, which is a lot sooner than anyone expected from the company. Guess they're getting desperate after the recent events after all. Hyun Suk also spoke about his role in the making and promoting of the group, seeing as he was never this involved with the previous YG girl groups like 21 and Blackpink. According to him, the members of the other groups were older when they debuted, so because of Baby Monster's young ages, he saw them as YG's daughters rather than just junior artists. Guarding Ahyeon, he mentioned that she unfortunately had to stop training for a few months due to her alleged poor health. He wasn't certain about her return date, but wanted to clarify that she hadn't left, as the rumors had stated, so he made sure to state that she would indeed come back. Even though this didn't answer any of the questions that people had about her, some netizens are convinced that she's going to rejoin the group since Hyunsuk keeps mentioning her. To other people, his constant mentioning of Ahyeon comes off as desperate and fishy. They're arguing that he's putting a lot of pressure on Ahyeon to save the group from flopping and the company from completely failing. A commenter even said that if Baby Monster's debut hadn't completely tanked, he would have completely forgotten her and we'd hear nothing about it until the day she officially left. Left. However, if Ayan doesn't end up coming back, it will look really bad for the company and its founder to keep mentioning her. They keep insisting that she'll come back though, so let's wait and see what happens despite the rumors stating otherwise. Either way, the whole thing looks suspicious and many people seem to think so. So what do you think? Thank you for watching and make sure to share your thoughts in the comments.